So it looks like I failed yet another med school exam, and honestly, who cares? What's going on guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Michael. I'm a first year medical student. And today we're gonna be talking about your perspective, your mindset, you know, going through medical school, you know, taking a ton of exams, maybe failing a few of them like I have in the past. Um, and so that's basically what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, you're not gonna wanna miss this video because I'm gonna go over some very key things that are gonna help you guys be successful in medical school and basically help you not to have a nervous breakdown or a stress-induced breakdown during medical school. So if that is why you guys are here, then let's get into it. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I did end up failing another med school exam. This is only the second one I failed, um, but we take a ton of exams. And so failing two exams in an entire year of medical school, I would call that a win. Um, you guys might not call it a win because you're so used to undergrad and trying to achieve the highest grades possible, which is understandable because you guys are trying to get into medical school. Once you get into medical school, things change a little bit. Um, my medical school is pass-fail, and most medical schools from here on out are most likely going to be pass-fail. So here's the thing. When you go to a medical school that's pass-fail, your grades don't matter nearly as much as they did in undergrad because all you're trying to really do is pass each exam and ultimately pass each class that you guys are taking. Now, it is important to do as well as you can. Obviously, I didn't try and fail my exam. I studied for hours and hours and days and days, and I still wasn't able to pass this exam. So if that doesn't tell you the difficulty of medical school, I don't know what will. But I did my absolute best and I came up a little bit short. It's not like I completely bombed the exam. The other thing I want you guys to know is I actually do understand the concepts that were taught. However, the way some of the test questions are worded, sometimes they're confusing to know what the professor is asking, what they want you to answer, kind of like the MCAT. And that just makes it a little bit more difficult to do well on med school exams. It's not that I didn't study. It's not that I didn't understand the material. It's that maybe I didn't understand that one concept that they decided to test us on, but I understood the other 10 concepts that they didn't write a test question for. So it's all about your guys' perspective. And that's kind of what this whole video is about is your perspective, you know, in life, in medical school, in undergrad, you know, how you guys perceive the MCAT. Everything is gonna come down to your guys' perspective and that's ultimately going to be how you guys look at the world. So kind of bringing it back to failing in medical school and why I'm not completely upset about that. I'm not, you know, going crazy because I failed a med school exam. And it's because my perspective is that Ultimately, I passed the class. Um, I might have failed this exam, but my previous exam I did really well on. And basically, I passed the class that's titled cardiopulmonary renal. Like, that is the block that we're in right now. And I passed it because I got above a 70 in the class. So you guys can kind of think about your exams in medical schools as little battles, but think of the actual course you're in as the war. And so you want to win the war, it doesn't matter if you lose a few battles, just as long as you ultimately win the war, then you guys are going to be completely fine in medical school. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while now, you guys know I've talked about this topic a little bit in the past, and it's so important for you guys to understand that medical school is not undergrad. You have to completely change your way of thinking, your outlook on grades and exams, um, everything changes once you get into medical school, which is kind of why I think undergrad and the whole pre-med system and curriculum is complete garbage because it doesn't prepare you for medical school, which you guys probably think it's preparing you for medical school. But let me tell you, as soon as you guys get into medical school, it's a rude awakening because 
you're gonna realize, wow, I didn't actually learn anything relevant in undergrad. So you guys probably are wondering what I actually got on my final cardio pulmonary renal exam. Actually, this exam didn't have any cardio. That was mostly on the first exam, which I really did well on. And if you guys didn't watch um, one of my previous videos, I talked about the class average and my actual score on that exam. So make sure to go check out that video. The link will be in the description. But on this exam, it was mainly pulmonary and renal physiology. There's a little bit of like immunology sprinkled in there, a little bit of histology and anatomy, but the majority of it was renal and pulmonary physiology. And the exam lasted three entire hours. So the exam was for a about 120 questions, a little bit more than that. So we had about 40 questions for three different blocks. So 40 questions, 40 questions, 40 questions. And for each block, we had an hour to complete it. So an hour to complete 40 questions times three. And so on my first block, I actually did really well. I got a 72%, which I was actually really surprised because when I went to click submit on that first section, I was like, wow, I'm gonna get like a 50 or 60%. I did not feel confident whatsoever. I clicked submit and I was, actually surprised, I got a 72%. I was really excited, really happy with that score. And I was like, wow, maybe this test is gonna be just fine until I took block two. Um, when I took section two, I actually felt better about it than section one. So I was going through it, I was answering the questions, you know, I was like, wow, this is, you know, not so bad. And then I go to click submit, and I got a 57%. A 57% has been my all-time lowest score on a section of an exam in medical school so far. It's been my lowest score in medical school so far. Um, and I, told, I just told you guys that I felt pretty decent about it. So I don't know what happened there, but I was like, whatever, you know, like that's averaging like a 63, 64%, something like that. And I still had one more section to go. So section three came around. It felt like section two, like I felt pretty good, but there were some questions that I was like, honestly, I have no clue. I don't know what the professor wants me to answer. So, you know, it is what it is at that point. So you just pick something. And when I clicked submit, I actually got a 63%, I believe. Um, so I didn't pass two portions of that exam. I passed one of them. But ultimately, I think if you just like add all that stuff up, the average that I got or my exam score was right around a 63%. And so it's only the day after I took the exam. So I don't know the class average yet. Um, my buddies did pretty well from what they've told me. They don't tell me their scores. I don't know why, but um, I'm guessing that the class average is going to be right around a 70. I'm hoping because I'm pretty below what I think the average is going to be. Um, so if the average is a 70, like great, um, there's going to be a giant curve in the class. And if you guys didn't know, our school curves up to 85%. So if the class average is a 70%, then they will add 15% to everyone's score so that that 70% average is now an 85% average. So that's what my school does. So if they end up doing that, then I'll end up getting like a high C on that exam. Um, I'm expecting to get around a high C or maybe a low B in this class. So that's kind of what I'm expecting. Completely happy about that. But the reason why you also need to get good grades in medical school, especially at a pass-fail medical school, is because you're competing for class rank at that point. You're not really competing for a grade or a GPA. You're competing for class rank. And basically, when it comes down to residencies, the medical school is going to tell the residency programs your class rank. They're not going to tell them like, oh, this person's 65th out of 240 students. No, it's going to be the, this person is in the top quarter of the class. This person is in the top half of the class. So that's kind of why, even though I don't care about failing an exam here and there, I still need to do well in order to be 
in that top half of the class. So guys, if you take anything away from this video, it's you need to change your perspective on, on medical school, on what you guys are trying to accomplish. Are you guys trying to be, you know, top of the class? Are you guys trying to be, you know, top half of the class? Do you guys want to try and get straight A's in medical school? I mean, I feel like we're all trying to do our very best in medical school, but the reality is in medical school, they're going to throw so much at you. And I think they do this just hoping that 10, 15% of it actually sticks because you're not going to be able to remember everything you learn in medical school. I'm just gonna tell you guys that right now, you might remember the stuff for your exams, but you aren't going to remember everything in medical school. You'll be lucky if you guys can remember 20 or 30% of what you learn in medical school. And you can ask any physician, any resident, any like upper class um, medical student, you're not gonna remember you know, all of these minute details, but the thing that you should be striving to do is remember the large concepts. And once you get into your specialty, you can start learning the little details of that body system that you're specializing in. So when you guys get to medical school, I don't want you guys to stress yourselves out. It's okay to fail an exam. Just get that in your mind you will fail an exam in medical school. And if you're as lucky as I am, you'll fail too in your first year. No, I'm just kidding. Like try not to fail an exam. Obviously that's not a great thing, but it's gonna happen. So get that in your head that it's okay to fail an exam. Now where that becomes an issue is when you start failing classes. Now you don't wanna fail a class in medical school because you'll have to retake that class and if you fail a certain amount of classes, you can actually be dismissed from your medical school. Now that is a very rare thing and I'm not trying to scare you guys, but that's the reality. But failing a test here and there, that's not gonna get you guys kicked out of medical school. That's not even an issue. Like half of your class is gonna fail you know, the exams that you guys are taking. You know, at my medical school, the average on all of the exams that we've taken is probably right around a 75%. So half of the class is above a 75. The other half of the class, they're either between that 70 and 75 or they failed the exam. So it's common and it doesn't mean that you're dumb. It doesn't mean that you didn't study hard or you don't know the material. It's just that you didn't know the answer to a few of those questions. And if the professors maybe worded it differently, you might have gotten it right. Maybe if they asked about a different concept that you studied a little bit more, you might have got it right. And so you just can't think that, oh, I'm so dumb, I'm not gonna be a great doctor because I failed one exam. I failed two exams or whatever. So hopefully this video has helped somebody out there, whether you're in medical school, whether you're a pre-med student. You know, I really hope that this helped you guys out. If you are a pre-med student with a low GPA, low MCAT score, come talk to me on Facebook. I have a page called Med School Mentor. It's where you guys can book a call with me. You guys can just chat with me. I can help you guys get into medical school. I can help you guys along with your pre-med journey. You just have to reach out and ask for help. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.